Some people want to be the best, others want to see the world burn, but some simply like the darkness. And they shall appear. In this hand, Dex opens the button and Stefan 3-bets in the big blind. However, he only 3-bets to $950, while the current meta, other high stakes crushes and solvers all suggest bigger 3-bet sizings from the big blind, Stefan just doesn't care about conventions. What he prefers is taking people away from the studied paths of GTO and forcing them down the dark and unexplored territories of exploitative poker. You merely adopted the dark. I was born in it, molded by it. So let's take a trip into the darkness and explore the difference between the GTO line and the Stefan line. And since GTO versus exploitative poker has always been one of the most frequent discussions, let's find out how much a foundational understanding of game theory can actually help you in an unknown situation. For that we'll welcome QY, game theory expert and owner of the YouTube channel Poker Giraffe and we'll ask him some questions about Stefan's line. Let's see if he can deal with them. So. We are getting right into it and the first question I have for you is compared to facing a bigger 3-bet sizing as the button, do we call more often or do we call less often against this 3-bet? So against a smaller 3-bet, I'm pretty sure we adjust by calling more often simply because we have better products and at the same time we might 4-bet a little bit less since there is less dead money to capitalize on. Yes, that is correct. So because the sizing is smaller, as you said, we're getting a better price and that gives us the right products to call a lot more hands uh, compared to a bigger sizing. Good start, but we're just warming up. If we choose this smaller 3-bet sizing, what would be the optimal adjustment to our range uh, compared to the GTO sizing? How would our range change? Would it be A, more polarized? B, less polarized, or C, roughly the same? So in my understanding, it should be more linear. So it should be B, less polarized. That is correct. Because of the smaller sizing, button will be forced to call more hands, which is a reason for us to 3 better more linear range, which dominates more of his calls. So we want to have a stronger range on average because we are going to see the flop more often and be up against more calls by our opponents. Yeah, normally if we three bet smaller, you, we're gonna get we're gonna get called more, and uh, we face a four bet a bit less also. I think right? because uh, yeah. opponent is getting better pot odds, or he's gonna ship a lot of the mixes. They're gonna start becoming like almost PR calls, uh, and that's when we want to be very prepared for. What happens after we get the call? Let the games begin. I will show you where I have made my home. Then I will break you. On this flop, compared to the GTO 3-betting range, or the scenario in which the big blind would 3-bet a bigger sizing, and uh, mm -hmm. the according GTO range, on this flop, do we want to see bet smaller than in the GTO scenario? Do we want to see bet the same size or do we want to see bet bigger? Mm, that That is harder <laughs> than the first question <laughs> or smaller. Let, let me think about this for a bit. Okay, orange is stronger, that's for sure, or we connect with the board. But I'm not sure if it's going to affect the sizing too much. I mean, orange is pretty polarized. Maybe the only difference... I can think of is that if we go for the small size, we might have sixes and sevens at some frequency, and then those hands maybe want to bet smaller, but hmm, doesn't seem that important to bet sixes and sevens anyway. Right? So it feels like we're going to be betting a polarized range either way, and I think if you have something like tens plus, it would just want to go quite large. Right? Are there any hands that want to go small? Maybe eight x. Okay, so right now I'm thinking if like is the linear range gonna have more eight x or polar range gonna have more eight x? Seems like it's about the same amount. 
I guess if we go larger, we might have like ACL of pseudo or something. Yeah, but even then ACL of pseudo is quite well as a checked, I would imagine. So my guess would be, I think either way, we're just going to go on the larger side. I don't think the range being linear, it would increase the frequency, but I don't I don't think it's gonna increase the or, or change the bet sizing. Yeah, that's my final answer. So all right, so your answer it stays the same. And that is correct. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> nice. <laughs> well done. So I, I used the one third, two thirds, and this 90% sizing. And mm -hmm. this sizing is actually the one that is always preferred by the solver or almost always. And mm. my explanation was the same that you said that the big blind still has tens plus and the button doesn't. And mm -hmm. those hands have a huge incentive to see bets very large because mm -hmm. The board is still somewhat dynamic, meaning that any turn can shift equities a lot. And I think that is always a good reason for a big C bet. Of course, the ranges are a little bit different. So the button's range is going to be weaker compared to the GTO scenario. But still, I think the overpair advantage just is just such, such an uh, important factor for all of this. And they want to bet about the same size anyway. Yeah. Uh, what about the frequency? Does the range yeah, that think... three bet smaller preflop bet less often, around the same, or do they bet more often? So I know I said more often earlier, but I'm kind of second guessing myself now. If we are more linear, we're going to have more bluff catchers. Could that actually decrease the checking frequency? Let's say if we had sixes or sevens and we're checking. No, I don't think so. I, I think we just go, like, we, we just bet more often, right? simply because our range is stronger, right? we have more, like, good hands. So we, hmm, do we bet more often? I, I could also see the frequency being about the same, actually, right? We're more or less going to be betting, like, 10s plus, maybe some 9x. Okay. Big blind is more polarized, right? So it's still going to have the same value range, but it's going to have a lot more, like, junky hands. A sex offsuit and stuff. Yeah, I feel like a lot of those hands will, will pull down the, the betting frequency. So I, I think my final answer would be to be betting more frequently right? if, if the range is more linear. That is correct. <laughs> you are on a streak. Nice. <laughs> but I'm, I'm, I'm at least happy that it's uh, making you think. So the, the questions don't seem too easy, but also... They are solvable, apparently. Yeah, it's not, not that simple. My reason was just really simple because Button's range is just weaker overall, but they still have more one-gappers, suited king X, queen X, and off-suited broadways. Yeah, that's a good point. I didn't consider uh, like Button's range being... It should be like significantly wider. So yeah, now, now that yeah. I think about it. There's no way that the uh, as in the, the frequency has to be higher right, given how much wider buttons ranges. Yeah, exactly. Little uh, gamble here won't be able to get a nickel for his grandma. On this turn, what is our most frequent play? with our hand and our range. So I can give you a tip that what we do with our hand mostly is also the same that we're doing with most of our range. Mm -hmm. Check, block bet, or a bet, a medium to big sizing. Mm, okay, it's definitely getting harder and harder. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't studied like this uh, through bet size specifically, Okay, but I'm going to try and not overthink this too much. So uh, assuming this this is similar to like a small blind, you know, kind of linear three betting range, this turn should not be that good for us. I, I don't I don't imagine we're, we're gonna have. I mean, we definitely have a ton of suited broadways. It's just that button is gonna have like a bigger proportion of them, right? Yeah, I, I'm just like completely guessing with, with this one. But let's say if I were to play this hand. So I see that quite large on the flop, right? So button's range is going to be quite condensed. 5x is not going to have much showdown value for sure. What does my value range look like? I'm going to have a bunch of flushes. I'm going to have a bunch of over pairs that are probably quite interested in betting. So I think the sizing should mostly revolve around the over pairs. Yeah, I think 
I will go for the medium to big size. If I have something like an over pair, I think it's still strong enough to go quite large, right? But that's going to have a bunch of 9x, 8x, 10s, jacks as well. Might not always be four bedding versus such a, such a small three bed size. So I think an over pair will be pretty strong here. Probably strong enough to bet like 3k or, or, or something. Yeah. So that, that's my answer. I would go for like a me medium, medium to large size. All right. Well, I'm happy the questions are getting more challenging because this one is not correct. So oh no, <laughs> <laughs> it it was about time. You you got four right and the fifth one. That that's a pretty good quote. So this is actually almost a range check. The big blind would check more than eighty percent of the range. My understanding is that button just has a lot more flushes. So what you said, I think, is one of the reasons that uh, the, the button's calling range on the flop is much more condensed, especially against the big sizing. So they will have much more flushes mm -hmm. than us. This isn't too much of a factor, but if we consider that their preflop calling range is also wider, it means that they are calling much more suited hands. So those mm. low to medium king x, queen x suited hands are in there a lot more, which will all call the flop if they have a flush draw. So mm -hmm. the nut advantage should be much higher for the imposition player here. But still, mm -hmm. I don't think that's that much of a factor because in the GTO line, this would be basically the exact same. So in that line, the big line would also check more than 80% of their range. But the only difference in both scenarios is that in the in the small three betting line, the solver would bet around 15% of hands for a block bet. And in mm. the GTO line, um, what you said would be true that the over pair advantage plays much more of a role. And mm. in that case, the big line would actually be shoving around 10% of hands. Do you feel in charge? Me? Of course not. Do I really look like a guy with a plan? No plan is proceeding as expected. So the button bets one third part. Mm -hmm. And if we look at the line where the big blind would have three bet to a bigger sizing preflop and the rest of the hand played out the same, five six would be a fold against this bet here. Mm -hmm. But in this scenario where Stefan threw bet to a small sizing and assuming ranges were adjusted accordingly, 5-6 would actually continue mostly. And the question is, why? What is the difference between the two scenarios? Ah, okay. And here, more than one answer can be true, but it doesn't have to. <laughs> so why, is there, why does the difference exist? Exactly. What's the difference between the line that would be playing out in the GTO way, starting preflop with a bigger sizing, compared to this line where we three bet smaller, where our ranges are looking a bit different. Why is there a difference in what five, six units would do in this spot? Hmm. A, button's betting range includes less flushes. B, button's betting range includes more air hands. C, the pot is smaller. Or a D, button's betting range is more polar in this case. Okay, when we three bet smaller, button's range is a lot wider. So if we, we're still betting the same size on the top either way, right? Like a big size. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So in with the smaller three bet, button should, should be continuing with a wider range as well since he's starting off with a wider range. So it's not single choice, right? It could be like multiple answers. Could even be like yeah, all yeah. four. Could be, could be. Yes. If if you want, I can tell you how many. That that in itself is a pretty big hint, I think. It means that it's not all four. <laughs> and no, it's yeah, not I all guess four. That... I, I can tell you that it's not all four. <laughs> and it's and it's uh, also not neither one. <laughs> <laughs> I I'm gonna go with okay, I'm just purely guessing here, but I would say a, button's batting range includes less flushes and also button's batting range includes more air hands. Right? And, you know, part, part of the reason, I mean, most of it is just guessing, but part of the reason is that uh, either way, button's batting small, so I don't feel like this range should be that more polarized. Okay, so that's my final answer. Okay, All right. You can edit it in, I guess. <laughs> 
Well, that's that's one for two. So pretty good, but only one of them is correct. So the second is actually correct. And number four is the other correct answer, which means that A is wrong and C is also not true. So the pot is smaller may look like a good answer, but it actually has nothing to do with it. And A, button's bedding range includes less flushes, is not true. Actually, the button's bedding range includes more flushes. And that has to do with the fact that preflop, the button's calling range is wider and therefore includes mainly more suited hands, which then, if they have a flush draw, always call the flop. And therefore, in this scenario, the button actually has more flushes on the turn than in the bigger three bed line. But what we can see here is that in the bigger three bed line, the button would actually bet a lot more 8x hands here. And in this smaller three betting line, the button would have and bet way more offsuited broadways. So jack 10 off, queen 10 off, also ace 10 off are not in the button's range when the big blind is three betting bigger and therefore they are not going to bet that in that scenario. However, in this one they do, and instead they are not betting 8x as much. Both of which mean that answer B and D are actually true. And of course what that means for us in the big blind is that a hand like 5-6 suited is a way worse bluff catcher just because our opponent is going to bet better hands way more often, which even serve as bluffs, so we are not even ahead of some of his bluffs, which is of course a bad spot to be in. And because that is not the case when the 3-bet preflop has been smaller, we can in fact continue with our pair of fives way more often. How about a magic trick? And the last question is, for this sizing, facing a jam, would 5-6 suited or would 5-6 of hearts specifically be a call for the solver more often than not, or would it not be? 5-6, uh, to me, the most important question is, is my hand actually a bluff catcher? Right. So of course, if we're losing to blouse, we're, we're not going to want to call this hand. But the fact that I think we called it on the turn right, makes it really unlikely that button should be bluffing hands like 8x and 9x or bluffing like any better hand. Even something like ace 5, I think, is, is going to have enough showdown value to check, considering that we're calling hands like 5-6. Right? And that might not be the case if the river was a bit more favorable for button, right? You know, if he completes a bunch of his bluffs, then he might start turning a bunch of one pair into a bluff. But yeah, that's probably not going to happen on the three of clubs. Right? So it does seem like 5-6 is a pure bluff catcher. Right? And then the next step in my thought process would be how good are my blockers? Right? And this seems like a complicated one, right? both in terms of the five and the six. I think at first glance, it's not super clear whether the, the five is good or the six is good for that matter. But you know, given how wide ranges are in this spot with the smaller three bet size and all that, I think but it shouldn't really be turning 5x into a bluff. Um, yeah, again, at least not on this river. Right? So the five seems like a pretty clean card. And at the same time, the six also doesn't appear like it blocks that many bluffs because what possible bluffs can button have that contain the six of hearts, right? I doubt he would be floating a six of hearts or king six of hearts on the block, right? That does seem a little bit loose. Uh, six, seven is a straight. So even, even if a button is not value jamming a straight here, I think that still doesn't necessarily make this a bad call. The, the fact that we're blocking value, I think that's just a bonus. Because at the end of the day, our, hand, our bluff catcher is pretty clean. Right? The five is a clean card. Uh, the six also doesn't seem like it blocks any bluffs, at least none that I can think of. Uh, so I think with five, six, if I'm not mistaken, it should be a call more often than not. Well, so perfect think... explanation and perfect answer. That is correct. <laughs> So basically everything you said is spot on. There's pretty much no better hands that are bluffing. Only a small amount of king eight suited according to the solver, but no other 8x or 5x would uh, bluff here. 
Instead, our five actually blocks value because four or five suited would be a shove here for the button. And the six also is just not in there as a bluff at all. So instead, the server would be mainly bluffing those offsuit overcards. So jack 10 off, queen jack off, king queen off, and even ace jack off, uh, mostly with a diamond, which in total does make five six of hearts a call here more often than not. But it is really close. <laughs> How about a magic trick? I'm gonna make this money disappear. Ta -da! It's... it's gone. Now, if you want to see me try to answer QY's questions, go ahead and watch this video next.